Welcome to another episode of the Urban Wall Street Project. You know it is always brings you some information, valuable information, talking from the streets, publications, journalism, fashion, hip hop, whatever it is, anything urban we cover it. Right now I'm sitting in, you know, midtown Manhattan in the fashion show house. You wanna know who show house it is? PH for Bone Clothing. Fashion extraordinaire, worldwide you better understand it's about to be a serious situation. They also carry out the main design, Jen St. Alpha Royale, first Italian upscale urban designer. It's a serious situation. You see the wardrobe, it's about to go in. I'm going to introduce my brothers to the right. This is definitely my brother from another mother. This is Phil from Bowen. How are you, my brother? Great, baby. Good to see you, man. Oh, Happy to have show, man. Yeah, all right. You know what I'm saying? So it's been a long time coming, but you know, you know, you know, you know, knowledge in this field. You've been doing this fashion thing for a long time. You were a fashion thing in school. You know, okay. <laughs> so it's not hard to Let's see. Let's give a shot to you. Real nice and out so, there. So it's good to see you now doing it right here in Midtown. You got your show with a little sexy. You know, you got your thing popping over overseas. Okay. I'm going to get into it. You're going to yourself and partners. Let's talk about it. First of all, I want to introduce my partner, my design director, and Massimiliano Rubada. We call him Mas. Mas is uh, my ace in the hole. You know, what I mean, everybody needs that 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 counterpart that brings the other side, that that makes the whole strong. You know what I'm saying? So Max is my better half. We do all of our business together. We're partners. We met about six, seven years ago in New York. Max is from Milan, and I let him talk about what he does with us. And, what his background is like. Hey, basically, I'm the director of this project, PH21, for the European uh, market for the second season in the beginning for the USA and Japan market. And it's a project that we are working since uh, two years almost. And we are trying to create this uh, crossover between the uh, urban in the, in the USA and the quality and sophistication from the like, European. We're working hard here in New York. Absolutely. So, you know, uh, Pierce from Bowen, um, I'm, I'm really happy to see him. I'm happy that you guys are doing this. Long time coming. I don't know if you got some serious you know, you're going to see it. Jesse, but tell me about Pierce from Bowen. Tell me the inspiration behind it. Um, and let me know, you know, what's the plan for Pierce from Bowen? You see, I see the show. Oh. Tell me about it. Exactly. Basically, our collections uh, started off with the you understanding know, of vision that at some point in my career, that instead of uh, you know, bringing all of my resources and, and professional expertise, you know, to a, another company, I, I bring resources to my own, you know, endeavors. Yeah. So with that in mind, uh, work the last six, seven years is part of me. Millions of calls, that's a good thing. Um, you know, after seven years of working with Max on different projects, uh, you know, we've collaborated, trying to make a transition from, you know, my whole thing with PH Performance is that I'm taking a uh, customer that once was uh, enamored with this urban clothing stuff, and now that they've gotten an opportunity to kind of pick and choose and buy and experience the different fashions that have been out there, you know, I think that customer's become a lot more educated. Now, through that education, along with years of experience and maturity, there evolves a different level of taste. Yeah. And PH Pavone is supposed to, is going to be, it's not supposed to be because it actually is, right. it right. exists today. It's going to be the bridge between the urban customer who has a better quality and choice and taste, who wants to go over to the other side and have that what we call the bridge of, of, of fashion. Of course, everything in life evolves. Mm -hmm. We have a saying in PH Pavone that nothing perishes, everything changes. Okay. So that, that that speaks to evolution, and, and our careers have been, you know, a great evolution in that between myself and my partner. We have a similar experience and we've been doing the same thing. Him on the design side, me on the marketing and business side, him in Italy and me over here in the state. And once we got our minds together and we began to, you know, you know, create our position, we understood the worth and the value. So PH Pavone is, is the next level of whereas our customers and the simulation customer, before we used to always look to the bigger designers, the bodies, the Dolce, the bodies, the this and the that one. You know, and weren't speaking to us directly, just like Tommy, Paul, and all the other guys when Erica started weren't speaking to us directly either. But we assimilated to them somehow. Uh, we, we we're always attracted to what's best and what's next. And when we're doing that, and we're looking for those choices. Who's speaking to us? So today, now we've changed all of that. This is the modern day 
for us by us, so to speak, within that next level of Exactly, exactly. See, that's what we're talking about. You watch the Urban Wall Street Project, you know what's all it is about us never alienating anybody, just by us maximizing our dollar. As is what was proposed said by Man Phil, why did he become his own business? Because he recognized his talents were much more valuable to him as far as assets that we can do for him financially than taking his talents to somebody else. Why make somebody else rich or wealthy? You can make yourself wealthy and they can get rich if you allow them to share your dream. It's a beautiful thing. Um, at the Urban Wall Street Project, entrepreneurialism is definitely what we talk about because situa situating yourself and putting yourself in position so that you can take care of your family, financial, and your community is important. How can you feel, you know, being an entrepreneur? What was the uh, inspiration to, to lead you into the entrepreneurial realm? And the same thing, you know, the same thing, you can't either way. All right, well, I'll start with that. It was always that kind of approach for me uh, since our age. You know, we had to do certain things to maintain, right. and uh, you know, being the good people that we are, you know, it was about either working really, really hard, or we had to have somebody who, who was supporting. Right. Right. In most cases, that's not the case. So, you know, uh, we were always entrepreneurs, uh, and that's kind of value that I brought to the companies that I helped make successful, because I didn't conform to corporate structures uh, to 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 take away from the strength of what I get as my inspiration, what basically, you know, inspires me as an individual. I don't do what I do because I have to, I do it because I love to. You know what I'm saying? And the minute that it stops it stops being love, is the minute that I should not be involved. Yeah, my my background is a little bit different. I started from you know, from the music or the rap music. But my mom's mom, she used to work for big brands like Versace or Romeo G in the year eighty five to ninety five. So I got this kind of double experience from the fashion couture and from the urban, from the hip hop music. So when I grew up, I put together the things, and you know, I just jumped in this next level since seven years. And now we think the market is ready today. Yeah, market is definitely ready. Understand this kind of concept because, uh, as we said before, this is a bridge between two cultures and two right, different right. approaches. But today we think that the people in the city already understand this. Yeah. Well, I like, what I like about it, you know, for those of you who are unfortunately not, you're not in the showroom, but you're going to see some of the different apparel, um, I like the fact that, you know, of course, you know, we, we in urban America, we have high taste, we have upscale taste, and the fact that we can now <clears throat> patron an uh, uh, urban uh, uh, designer uh, for upscale clothing. A lot of, a lot of times we're bothering me, you know, when I used to look at cats with, you know, a food, but when I'm at four highs, and Kathy's like, yo, the Uber, or the Versace shirt, yo, it's on sale, 250, I gotta have it. But you see a Fubu shirt that's maybe 150 or 100, nah, I don't want. So like, you will spend 250 for the Gucci, but you won't spend 100 or less for the Versace shirt. That's exactly what I was. One plus for that particular purpose. Well, that this thing I did when I was in school, as a matter of fact, one of my papers was on, you know, the consumer some of buying behavior and you know as a marketing you know student and as an economic student you know those things kind of go in hand um, what I realized is that we are an assimilation market not don't not not only do we assimilate to what we think is best but we'll go so far as to spend more money on something just to reduce the thought of the risk of making the wrong purchase yeah. so you know if the price is higher you know, in your mind, you feel like automatically there's an intrinsic value for something. Exactly. exactly. So we, within our own mind choices, have come to condition our mind. And it goes back to exactly the same. But with the PH Pavone collection, and I'll speak more about that in a little detail, but the PH Pavone, it's not so much about price. It's getting what you feel the product is worth. It's a love you a cost value. It's a feel. It's a quality. It's, it's a sense of style. Um, the reason why I could have I could have made my company with anybody. I mean, I could have found my partners here in the United States, but it took me going overseas and, and, and cross-referencing my perspective with Max's perspective that gave me a better understanding on where and why I need to go in this direction. And that's so important that you said that because that, that leads right up to my next question. We have many people you see every day, right now, today, the next great designer that's going to be was born this morning. Yeah. Um, and really, literally, there's people all over the world yeah, watching. Yeah, our party just had a baby this morning. Yeah, right? We can't you say that. People, <laughs> <get my boy. laughs> people all over watching, and I want to be designer. I know I want to do that. Eight to seven, eight, twelve, seventeen. But the reality, like you said earlier, it's hard, hard work. A lot of commitment, dedication, passion, right, yeah. and perseverance. That has some tough skin. 
and, and then to perform on that field of steps or perform the steps to it, where he had to go. So he could have stayed right here, but he wanted to expand his horizon. That's with his understanding of his vision. So he had to cross, you know, cross the sea, the ocean, and find that mess that was perfectly. So we're going to kind of lead into a mess. I want you to talk to some of my people out there that might want to get in the industry. How tough and how prepared do you need to be? And what do you need to be prepared to do if you really want to be a player in this, in this fashion game? Well, basically, it's a long process because I think everything starts with a dream. As everybody, as every, every kind of thing in this world, because the dream keeps the man alive. So, but the point is, the road from the dream to the reality, this is the long and more hard, you know, thing in this life. So the problem is, you, you need to be able, you need to have big shoulders for, you know, carry all the things that I've been doing this road. Because you need to understand that there are a lot of competition outside, there are no rules in this kind of world, and you need to be really strong for keep your dream alive. This is the more important thing. You will learn a lot of people that talk to you about you need to do it this way, you need to do it that way, but I mean, you need to have a really clear idea in your head when you go. That's the point. And please, you need to have a lot of experience uh, personally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything is preparation. We talk about that. The five P's. A proper preparation prevents poor performance. You gotta be ready. You understand? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you need to believe in yourself. This is the first thing. And you need to believe uh, to the people that you are around you, because it is, today I think is more a team job. It's not. It's no more like 15 years ago when uh, we people like Armani or Versace, they grow up in a different reality, in a different fashion system, in a different business too. Because the world was completely different at the time. But today, I mean, you are not, I don't think there are Einstein anymore in this world for this kind of business, but it's, it's a matter to have a good team around you and good, you know, good people that support your ideals. So after that, you need to do a lot of experience. Personally, I think for every area, so that means for the fabric, for the construction, for the graphics, for uh, even the business, because you need to have a business, you need to be a business man. Right, so right, right, right. It's not right. only to be the best creative uh, person on planet Earth, mm -hmm. but first of all, you need to be a business man. Yeah, I'm great. Great. With, there you go. With, with celebrate. And now you're talking about the business. Just like the shoots, whatever it is, you can't just be so focused on the financial and, and negate the, uh, the attention to detail of the business. Because the business is 24 hours. If you have a fashion show, the fashion show might be 30 minutes, an hour, two hours. It but the business leads up to that. It's very important to understand that. Um, and it's cool. I want to talk about so, Jensen Alpha Royale. It's a serious brand right here. It's a serious, it's urban, upscale, Italian design. Let's talk about it, Phil. Oh, like I, like I said earlier, um, you know, it's, it's like it's like sitting down to dinner. You know what I mean? You got so many things on the menu, but you know, you really can only have one dish. What do you choose? Uh, they're not me. I learned how to eat two main courses. Pizza is bigger than a mouth. My appetite is bigger. My my my, uh, my hunger is bigger than my appetite. You know, however it sounds. But ginseng is uh, a quiet giant. Um, that's how I see the brand. Um, that's actually where we began to start collaborating together. Again, Max uh, at one point was the design director, co designer with um, our other partner, yeah, Paolo. Paolo was, uh, we were triangle here, yeah. you know what I mean? Right. This is how it started. Paolo and Max were working together in Italy for a long time. They were very good friends, still are to this day. Uh, when I met them, I met them both together through a very good mutual friend of ours who's like one of the biggest restaurant club owners here in the city. Yeah. He insisted that we meet, and he insisted for six, seven months prior to us even meeting. Right. Every time they came into town, I was in LA or I was someplace else. Right. The last time that they came to the to the city, I was out of, I was in LA. Right. And uh, I got a call but I had just landed in that JFK. Right. It's like I had the plane as soon as they put that bomb and you're able to turn yourself on, my phone rang. And I'm coming from Cali and I'm looking at the phone and I'm like, okay, who's this? I'm like, yo, what's up? And it was my buddy. Uh, brother named Cordell. Cordell was like, my guys in here. 
you need to come meet them. I said, where are you at? He said, I'm at Studio 54 Lounge. Mm -hmm. I'm going to party here, come by, they're here, they have a flight in the morning. So I went straight to the airport, dropped my bags, had the, the car wait for me, mm -hmm. and take me right to the, um, to, the, to the spot. And when I arrived at the spot, I met these guys. It was late, we didn't get to really get into much, but I liked the vibe, and made a plan to meet for breakfast that next morning. All right. Came to the hotel, met them for breakfast, mm -hmm. picked them up, we sat down, they laid everything out to me. I was blown away. Absolutely blown away. I almost, I, I went, they left that morning, got on a flight, I went home, and I prayed. I was like, yo, I think this is the, the, the match and the combination that I've been looking for. Because as Matt said before, nothing in this business you do alone. You know what I mean? You're only as good as the people who surround yourself with, and who you associate with, and who you depend upon. So make sure that the people that you're dealing with are on the same level that you are. Actually, make them better than you. Have, have something for yourself to aspire. Like, everybody knows me, and they know what I've done, and what I've you know accomplished, and what they know of me. But when I'm standing next to this guy, He's motivating me to reach his level. Right, right. That's what's his about. level and my level within our own worlds are respectively on another level, but to one another and our expectations and our experience as we've come this far, we understand that there is always the next level. And that's what we push each other for. So when I'm, you know, crazy in the head and I don't feel good one day, you know what I'm saying, he comes in and he's, and I'm like, I can't, I can't, and we're not competitive nations exactly. as, 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 as a team. So he inspires me and I inspire him. And I say all of that to say that ginseng is the culmination and the actual proof of fact of what happens when great people, with great minds, with great intentions, and drive come together. This is what happens. 24 karat gold. Jeans with yeah, yeah. Japanese denims that Serious. come in a box that are one of a kind, that are very exclusive, that probably retail somewhere at about 700 and 750. But this is my number one selling jean. Yeah. How does that happen? Jeans saying outfit royale. The name itself speaks for itself. If you look at the name Jean, it's really Jin. Jin saying we are the root of what we would consider this next level luxury street apparel. Okay. You can call me urban, you can call me street, you can call me suburban, I don't care what you call me. We all make pants with two legs, okay? Pretty much. And we all button up and zip up in the same place. So you can call it whatever you want. But the difference is, is that with his level of understanding of quality, my level of understanding of quality, having to deal with going through all the trials and tribulations of learning this business, because it took me 15 years to think that I understand what's going on now. 15 years. 15 years. Yes. 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 Doesn't yes. happen overnight. And he's not finished yet. Oh, I'm not finished. I'm not finished. I'm still learning. I've been going back and forth to Italy with these guys. He's teaching me how to pop a denim, uh, production, uh, design, graphics. I'm learning the other side of the business as he, he is learning the other side of this business. So understand why people watching, you hear a lot of information about an amazing design and self fashion person, amazing line, but the more important thing you're hearing is the process. We always get so caught up on the product, the product of pH per bone, the product of ginseng, but the product of pH per bone is represented by a 15 year process that's still occurring and will always occur. So there is never an end to perfection. There is never an end to excellence. There is no end to quality because it can always be better. And that's internally and externally. But remember this, your external world is a reflection of your internal. So if the outside of your world is crazy and when you're walking around your environment is crazy, whether it's the business you're in, whether it's the company you have, whether it's your girlfriend, relationship, that means if the external is twisted, that means you got to look inside and check the internal because the internal of your business is out of whack. Yin and yang. One doesn't operate without the other and they both have to be in accordance with one another. And, and again, we're still trying to find that balance ourselves. You know, I, we're human, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, we prioritize and, and we prepare. And one thing I understand is that preparation what is it, uh, preparation and timing equals people's success? Right, they say, some people say, oh man, oh, well, some people might be watching them, like, oh, he got lucky because he worked with this particular company that we're not missing, we're not giving a free plug. <laughs> 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 oh, it's, 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 and then it's like, uh, he got lucky. 
I'm saying with luckism. I don't think there's anything such a thing as luck. Luck is this luck. You bet fixed five numbers, six oh, numbers, and you put a dollar and you win, that's lucky. But when you work hard and then your hard work turns pays off and you're rewarded, that's not a luck. So this is the, the first idea of, the, of this brand uh, five years ago, basically after a great business around this concept. You know, that pocket wash. Yeah. Yes. yes. But this guy right there is uh, Mr. Frosty Free from Rhapsody Crew. He's a great friend of Paolo because also Paolo is a uh, Rhapsody Crew member. So uh, from his idea, we developed this product that, of course, during the season gets some kind of evolution. But since the beginning, our idea was to create this new uh, world between the USA and between Italy. So where both of us, me and Paolo, we were really, you know, inside this rap and hip hop, this right, right. world. So we, we put two things together. So this is the the, the hip discipline of hip hop. That's right. Yeah. And what, and what I like about it, you said this is represents this is a brother with the image from the pocket is a brother from Rock Steady Crew. Yeah. Rock Steady Crew. You don't get any more hip hop. Fundamental. Right. In 1973, yeah, in 1973, uh, Flashdance came out. Right. The movie. Uh, that was the first time anywhere in the world anyone had seen the face of what hip hop represented, and this was the first image you saw. I think it was in Time Magazine in 1973. It showed Frosty Freeze, Crazy Legs, and a bunch of other guys, and this was the face of hip hop that was introduced to the rest of the world because at that point it was only in New York, it was only in the Bronx and it trickled out to California to some degree but within the East Coast and some of the West Coast it had not existed anywhere else and as a b-boy myself and you know my, my history that's how I got in this business, you know it was a perfect match for us because it was everything was natural and another thing is, is that I, I don't believe in luck anymore because I understand something I couldn't have planned what happened any better than it happened and I found out that God is the best of planners. So I don't have to worry about what, when it's going to happen. I have to just be prepared for when that time is itself there. Exactly. That's what's about, you know, I'm looking at so, so we got the Gen Z, so we talked about it a little bit, but I, want, I definitely want to talk about the people going because the shirt that I'm using, I'm about to write This down. is Gen This is Gen Yeah, this is, uh, last fall, so we call the call them on, we, we have tag, tag, tag lines for the collection. It's called Gen Z Outfit Royale, and what we mean by Outfit Royale is that style is an option with us. We wear a piece of our clothing, no matter what you're working with, you automatically inherit style based on what we brought to the product. Um, and we also call it crude Italian careless shirt. Everything in the Jensen collection is 100% made in Italy. Now, never before has it been done, whereas a streetwear brand selling in the United States was 100% made in Italy. So, you know, it's not always who does best, it's always sometimes who's first. So, <laughs> you know, with that in mind, we understand that we are the first, as uh, Matt said before, we were doing back pocket embellishments five years ago before it came to the States. Right. And now all of a sudden that's the biggest thing in retail. Right pretty now. much, pretty much. Okay. We also have another logo of ours that, you know, we did five years ago. And now it's uh, maybe three, <laughs> okay, three and a half actually. <laughs> yeah, everybody's on skulls now. Uh, we have the scissors on the skull, we call that killer cuts. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we, we work with a lot of different things because of our partner Paolo being a great artist and illustrator that he is, we never run out of creative. And, and, and that's part of understanding what we need as a company to make sure that we cover all the bases. Uh, you know, I, I have a saying that, you know, back in the days when I started those other companies that I made so successful, um, you know, we hire surgeons. Right. Everybody in their position has to be able to go in and do service. Put on scrub up, put on the gloves, and go in. You know what I'm saying? If you're not capable of doing that with confidence, conviction, and great results, then, like I said, you're only the good for people you surround yourself with. And make sure that your game is on a certain level, so that way you're always perfecting yourself, and at the same time, you have an internal gauge as to how to meet other people. P.H. Lamont, you know, uh, we're going to be, we're in Europe. Yes. Uh, we're definitely going to be in the States. Yes, now. Now, we're in the States now. P.H. Lamont will launch this holiday. Yeah, but it's actually going to have a soft yeah. launch for uh, our week 2007, and after we will have the big launch of the collection in 
project uh, for Spring Summer 2008. And basically, the approach of the collection is a little bit different from ginseng because ginseng is a, is a basic uh, garden with, of course, the heart of the collection is the creativity of Mr. Paulo Pistori. So, uh, our approach for PH Fabon is more designer and is more uh, structured as a collection. So, basically, we pay for the denim area. Um, the best competitors in the market because we also have great outsourcing production in the Mediterranean area. And we build, we call it a transversal collection with the big scissors. So that means there is not uh, there is not a limitation for this kind of product. So everybody can wear it, but the difference of course is the way that you can wear the product. Okay. It's your interpretation of yes. that's it. That's it. Basically, so we have two different approaches. One is more basic for ginseng, and the other one is more, uh, I don't want to use the word fashion, but however, it's more transverse. That's the word, the couturier. Oh, the couturier. The couturier. Learn something new. Well, the last question I want to ask is this. Because, um, you know, I, I will be I will be done in PA. So it's not even a question, because it's real good to feel good. One thing I think is really important though, because as a designer, a producer, when you're a creator, it's always important how what my market, my target audience thinks, yes. they, before they come to my product, when they stand in front of my product, what they purchase my product, and they wear my product, or utilize my product. Oh, first of all, I think the sophistication and the quality of the fabric, and absolutely the fit. What I think is really important also, as I said before, that everybody can wear this thing is the way that you go to wear it in the street. Because I think for the level of quality and uh, as I said before, the construction mm -hmm. level, we can be at the same point as go to brand like uh, Gabbana or like, you know, Polo. So we are this, we have this kind of competitors outside. So. So, you know what it is. Once again, you see us. You see the ginseng. You see the PH Pavone. Yes. Yeah. Urban Wall well, Street Project, one location, Midtown at the PH Pavone showroom. PH Pavone mats. Designers extraordinaire. Uh, carriers. Incredible product extraordinaire. You see what it is. Um, stay tuned. Stay watching. Keep your head up. Hope you learn something. Hope you're inspired. If you're ready to get your fashion, it's a game right in um, a serious situation. You know what I'm saying? Now we're doing all the way out here. We want to pull this scully, baby. Early close to you, You know what it is. It's fashion. You don't got to match. Charlie, take us home, baby. Keep your head up. <laughs>